Hello and welcome. My name is Dan Nato, Application Engineer for Ceratech. Today I'm going to be talking about nonlinear material models inside FEMAP. So for this discussion, I'm going to use a material model 6061 aluminum. Stress strain information was pulled from the Atlas of Stress Strain Curves for 6061 aluminum. Since we are using nonlinear material models, we are interested in what's happening to the material after it has yielded. These are material models that we can go ahead and set up for an isotropic material inside a FEMAP. The first one is none, so this has no material nonlinearity. The next one is nonlinear elastic, where you go ahead and you define a stress strain curve, no plasticity. So this material model, the model actually does not yield. It just follows the stress strain curve. The next one is elastoplastic, or bilinear, and it follows the plastic modulus after the material has yielded. So this elastoplastic model you would go ahead and define where the material has yielded, and then it would follow the plastic modulus after the material has yielded. The last one is a plastic model. So for this one, you specify where the model has yielded, and then after it has yielded, instead of following a straight line like the plasticity modulus, it goes ahead and follows whatever stress strain curve that you have defined. So for this exercise, I went ahead and grabbed that stress strain information, just go ahead and copy it because it will create a function inside FEMAP. And you'll see down here in this picture, I went ahead and calculated this plasticity module. So it's just another linear line after the material has yielded. And to do this, I just go, went ahead and grabbed these two points, their stress strain values, and I did a delta calculation to go ahead and get this new slope. So let's go ahead and hop over to FEMAP and set these up. So the first thing that I'm going to do is let's go ahead and import in that function. So just right click on functions new and we'll go ahead and define our stress uh, V strain curve. And make sure you go ahead and you grab the type to be stress versus strain. Now I'm just going to go ahead and paste that information from the clipboard. So now I have my stress strain curve inside a uh, FEMAP that I can reference. And I'm just going to give this a larger ID so that I can find it easily. So now let's go ahead and create our material. So I can right click on materials new. And you'll notice here is our nonlinear tab. So for the first one, it's nonlinear elastic. And it just follows a stress strain curve. So we can hit our general tab, we can load our 6061 information, we can manually type it in. In this case, I'm just going to go ahead and load it to save some time. And just go ahead and change this over to our nonlinear elastic material, and we'll just reference it to that function. So if I hit OK, it'll accept those defaults. So let's go ahead and create our next material keep these as default and then we'll hit our nonlinear tab. This time we'll hit elastoplastic. So now this time we need to define where our model is yield and what yield criteria that we want. So in this case we can hop back or we can just look at our function that we already defined. So an easy way to do this is just right click on our function, hit show, and you'll see here is a graph of our values. So we can see right here is at 38,000 where our material is yielded. So let's go ahead and use that to help drive our material. So let's go ahead and go back, right click, right click, recreate that material. I'm going to load our 6061 like we did before. Nonlinear, elastoplastic. And this time we're going to go ahead and type in that yield value, 38,000. And I'm just going to go ahead and copy that in case I need to use it again. And this time we're going to enter in our plastic modulus, which came from our Excel spreadsheet. Went ahead and calculated our plastic modulus. Just go ahead and copy that. And let's paste this right in here. And now, after our material has yielded at our 38,000, it's going to follow this new linear slope that is represented here in this plasticity modulus. So let's go ahead and create our last material model. So we'll go ahead and grab our 6061. And we'll hit our nonlinear tab. And this time we're going to hit plastic. We have to enter in our yield. So where's our material going to yield? So we enter in that 38,000 as before. And this time, under our nonlinear properties, now we have a function dependence. So I'm just going to go ahead and grab that stress strain curve. 
So now it's going to yield at this value, and then it's going to follow this curve after it has yielded. Now, one important thing to note here is you need to make sure that your stress strain curve lines up to this exact same point, or NASTRAN will uh, come back with an error. So that's how you go ahead and set up these three uh, nonlinear materials inside FEMAP.